What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's good? What's good, y'all? Back with some more Larry Bird content slash Luka Doncic content. This one was recommended to me by nobody. But I was like, the best Larry Bird versus Luka Doncic story ever told? Is there something I'm missing? Did they have some type of interaction? Is there is there some is there some kind of beef? Or maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way. I don't know. But for now, buckle up. Let's see what this video is all about. And when you have some more free time, go check out the rest of our reaction video content to include Larry Bird content right there on our Larry Bird playlist. We got Michael Jordan playlist. We got Kobe playlist. We got whatever playlist. Go check them all out. All right, let's get into it. Before we begin, let's get one thing out of the way. Larry Bird said that there will be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. Magic Johnson said that in 1993. And that's still 25 correct. 25 years later, Luka Doncic was drafted to the NBA and their similarities were undeniable. Luca's got a pass with the basket all oh. the way to the hole. <laughs> Wait a minute, Luca. I've never compared a player to him until now. I'm talking about pace, court vision, and versatility. Oh my goodness. What a, what a find by Luca. That play right there, that's what gave me the Larry Legend flashbacks. <laughs> I was like, I've seen that before. You would, I mean, and I'm not saying it because of their skin. I'm saying it because of their pace. Larry Bird, in the modern game, if he was facing the floor as the primary ball handler, he would look like Luka. And although Luka Doncic has a long way to go before he's even considered in the same breath as Larry Bird, I'm about to show you why Luka Doncic is uniquely worthy of this comparison. Because later in the video, Luka had a game so impossibly great that not even Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, or even Larry Bird himself can say they've had. But anyone who's ever watched both Larry and Luka play can all see one glaring Ooh, similarity. That, that was a sick pass. He does that. have one thing that Bird has. It stands out so big, it's that killer yes, dog yes, instinct. Yes. And he got it. I don't care who you line up across him. He doesn't care. He is going to be an assassin. You know exactly what he's going to try to do, and he's going to get it done. That's the type of player Larry Bird was, and that's the type of player we're identifying and seeing in Luka in today's I game. Know Richardson, left side of the floor. Luka's three. It's a win. And to Boston again. Going to get down. I, I would be afraid to play against Luka. I'm telling you personally, mm -hmm. that's how good he is. He's this much below Larry Bird, uh, or maybe that much. Mm -hmm. But Larry Bird would put fear in me and everyone else just like Luca does. And, I, and I, I watch him going, man, this dude, every move Kevin McHale's ever had plus, mm -hmm. and he can put the ball in the basket. And not only can Luca score like Larry, but he does it while talking trash like Larry too. So Larry got in the game one time, and for some reason, Chuck Daly puts me in. And Larry looks around and goes, are you on me? I said, yeah, I got size on you right now. I've been watching every movie. He goes, y'all not double teaming? And he's looking around. <laughs> he goes, yo. I go, nah, it's just me, fella. He goes, mouse in the house. Mouse in the house. And they change the play, and he catches the ball. He does this. And he shoots it. He says, Sal, you better ask for a double team, bro. <laughs> 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 That was just one of many Larry Bird trash talking stories. And Luka Doncic already has Love an iconic move. trash talking story of his own. After game five of the Western Conference semifinals, Luka's Dallas Mavericks were down three to two in the best of seven series to the number one seeded Phoenix Suns. During the game, Phoenix's best player, Devin Booker, trolled Luka by laying on the floor and exaggerating like he was really hurt and then said a phrase that will forever live in infamy. The Luca special. After that game, Luca walks back to the locker room and in front of all of the cameras and media yells, Everybody up, but they up. Air 
everybody acting tough when they up. The sheer confidence to say something like that, even after a loss in a 3-2 deficit against the number one seeded team in the NBA, is a mentality that even Michael Jordan himself would respect. That's the sign of a good man. If you can talk shit when it's even score, or talk shit when you're behind school, when you're ahead, it's easy to talk. Let's see if all that trash talking starts when it's 0-0. Zero, zero. After Luka Doncic said what he said, he proceeded to win Game 6 and Game 7 to send the Phoenix Suns home in one of the worst blowouts in NBA history. Now, every time Luka puts on a show against any given team, it will forever be called the Luka Special. We're going to be seeing this photo for a long time. This shot will hang on permanent display <laughs> in the Museum of Ass Kickings. I call him Luka Legend, like Larry Legend. D is very comparable to Larry Bird. Both could handle the ball. Both could run and initiate the offense. Both were tremendous passers. Both can shoot with distance. Neither one is what we would call today athletic. They don't jump that high. They aren't that fast. But because of their basketball IQ, because of their craftiness, because of their strength, they can override their lack of athleticism. Now let's point out the elephant in the room. The real reason for the Luka Doncic, Larry Bird comparison. The one I've been trying to avoid all video. The most that ties Luka and Larry together is the step back jump shot. How, you may ask? Well, the shot that Luka Doncic perfected, Larry Bird invented. Yes, Larry Bird was the first player ever to do a step back jump shot. It was so deadly, just look what it did to this defender. Bird could get to any spot that he wanted to and hit you with that step back fadeaway. Larry had the greatest step back I ever saw. You know, because he, he would give you to you on your left, and then he would step back mm -hmm. and let it go. Yeah. You see, people don't yeah. realize how big of, Larry yeah, was either. Six ten. Yeah. He was six yeah. yeah. ten. Yeah. Shooting that. There was nothing you could T do about it. Tell us about it, Sneak. T tell us about Larry Bird. <laughs> 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 Seems like you have some experience on this topic. <laughs> Wonder why they're all laughing? The Hawks game. Because look what Larry's step back jump shot did to the human highlight film Dominique Wilkins. Trying to have a big night. Dominique fell down, that left bird wide open, and so he buries it. Ouch. But it doesn't stop there. Dominique Wilkins was on the wrong side of Larry Bird's highest scoring game ever. <laughs> <laughs> I get a game. Well, Kevin McHale scored 57 one night. So Bird said, I'm going to break your record against Atlanta. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Won't get 55, not here, you know. Well, <laughs> some free chili. he got so hot in that game. I've wow. never seen a guy get that hot before. You talk about that patented step back. He was doing that step back. He was scoring anywhere on the floor Ooh. that he wanted. 205 remaining in the third. Bird for the bomb. Got it again, a three-pointer. You're seeing the greatest in the game, Larry Bird. And there are people like Bob Cousy, Casey Jones, Red Auerbach, who think he's the best ever. Bird got his own. He started calling the shots. Uh, he started sitting off the glass. Yeah. That was the one game that I think he tortured down with me. Uh, uh, he saw Dominique, this up-and-coming player, and, and he just tortured him mentally. He was calling shots off the glass, who's next, where you want this one from, uh, and he just made one after another. Uh, when he got to about the 55th point, you knew it was something special. Uh, his last shot, he said, uh, in the trainer's lap, coming down the court. Uh, which meant it was going to be a three and it's going to be awful these. And then he said, who wants it? And I think Ricky Brown, I'm not for sure who it was, ran out after him. And he shot this high rainbow. Uh, it goes in. Ricky bumps into him and accidentally <laughs> knocks him on our trainer's lap. So it was exactly what he said. It was, it was an accident, but it was almost fate. And they show a shot of our bench. Cliff Livingston uh, and Eddie Johnson are standing up giving each other high five. It was pretty awesome. Larry Bird had a career high 60 points that game. With three seconds, Bird will try another jumper and hit it at the buzzer. Bird has 60 points. That's crazy how he called it, but the fact that he 
He had one last shot to get it at the buzzer, to get the 60, and he got it with the utmost confidence. That's crazy. It came down to the last shot of the game to cap 60, and he did it. That's that's the crazy part. He didn't get it in the third quarter. He didn't get it halfway through the fourth quarter. It came down to a buzzer shot, and he capped it. That's crazy. It is the greatest shooting exhibition I've ever seen in my life. Which brings me to Luka Doncic's best game ever. They've been playing basketball in the NBA for more than 75 years. And tonight what Luka Doncic gave us has never been seen before in the league. With 33 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks were losing by nine points. A deficit that no team in the last 20 seasons has ever come back from with such little time on the clock. Bro, we, no, we were getting we were getting lit up. We were getting smoked. But the Mavericks came down, hit a quick three-pointer, and Luka immediately forces a jump ball on the inbound pass. And then this happened. And they call a jump ball. Possession, 20 seconds to go. Hardaway, three-pointer. Short, Doncic on the foul. Banks it home with a foul. He got foul. 50 for Doncic. Dude's going for like 40 in 50, you know what I'm saying? It's like a frantic dash to like tie the game. Looking, that's close though, five seconds. Dinwiddie gets it, Dinwiddie fires up the three. Oh, it's good! Dinwiddie knocks it! We had like, like nine points in like two seconds. And after the other team hit two more free throws, Luka Doncic ends up on the free throw line with only four seconds left on the clock. He makes the first, but they're still down by two points. So now Luca needs a miracle. I remember this. His only chance to win the game would be to intentionally miss a free throw, beat five people to the ball, grab his own rebound, and somehow hit a shot in four seconds. Now the Knicks need a defensive rebound. The flexible ball loose. Still loose. Doncic. Oh, he puts it in. He puts it in. The <laughs> his reaction. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> Think about how deflating that is, right? For sure. Like, to even get to overtime. You 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 had a big lead. We actually tied the game and get to overtime. Luka got to have 50 at the time, right? I don't know how much he scored in overtime, but he's got to have 50, 52, something like that. Going crazy. He starts calling out what he's going to do. No way. Because it takes, it takes, like, you got to be really nice to do that. Like, like, that's some Larry Bird shit. Oh, yeah, like, I'm sitting right here, and he's like, Spence, watch what I do to him. I'm yeah. gonna go down. I'm gonna post up one leg fake. Doncic fake. Doncic drives, falling away. Puts it up. Puts it in. Look at Doncic. He's got 58. Hey, listen, man. LD got game, bro. Luka Doncic dropped 60 points as the Mavericks hold on to win that game. This once in a lifetime comeback, combined with this game tying shot to lead a team to victory with not only 60 points and 10 assists, but also 21 20. rebounds, the only 60-20-10 game ever recorded, will go down as one of the greatest individual performances of all time. So when we compare Luka Doncic to Larry Bird, don't take it as disrespect to Larry Bird. Take it as the ultimate compliment. Because not only was this possibly the greatest individual game ever, but Luka Doncic is on pace to be one of the greatest players ever. It's just a matter of time. We're going to talk about Luka. He will be in the conversation for best player in the world. So I call him a new age version of Larry Bird. Even former Boston Celtic Cedric Maxwell who played six seasons and won two championships alongside Larry Bird, had this to say about Luka Doncic. You can quote me. This is Larry Bird reincarnated. You got to take the compliment that is coming from that comparison. All the greats, if you are compared to another great, guess what they're saying? Congratulations, we think you're great. It's actually the rites of passage. Fortunately, and one of the best things about Luca is you never hear him brag about being great. It's always other people. He lets his game do all of the talking. In the corner, Luca! Oh! Goes in! How did he do it? How did he 
do it! That is Luka magic! <laughs> so when Luka was asked if he thinks he's Larry Bird reincarnated, he said, you can't compare me to Larry Bird, you know, with all of the things he's done. I just want to keep hooping and having fun out there playing basketball. But is he right? Or is he just being humble? There are so many similarities to the game, but to compare him, you start to look at legacy mm -hmm. versus like who he is right now. Now, Luca's got a long way to go before he could be in a conversation right. with Larry Bird. But are there skill similarities? Yes. Now, if you agree that it's too early to compare the two, that's understandable. But Mark Jackson, who played 15 years in the NBA and is the sixth all-time leader in assists, has already seen enough from Luka Doncic. One of Larry Bird's best friends in life is Rick Carlisle, right. the former coach of the Dallas Mavericks, right. who made the statement comparing Luka to Bird. Size, strength, toughness, competitive spirit, not afraid of the bright lights. I don't want to point at anybody on the top 50 list. Right. But he's better than some of those guys. Right. And I watched some of those guys. Right. When they matched up against the Clippers in the playoffs, I'm sitting there saying Kawhi, Paul George, Pat Man. Beverly. Yeah. They, they got guys. Morris. Not, Mar they got guys that's not only going to defend them, but they're going to try to beat them up. Right. And I want to see how he's going to respond because I'm not sure he's ever faced this type of pressure defensively right. that he's about to face. Right. He put on a clinic, almost like they were little kids trying to defend right. him. Right. That record was identical to their home record. 21 and 15. A drive by Luca, a foul on Patrick Beverly. Where he, he imposed his will on them and took everything that they had to offer and, and was the best player. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three pointer. Bang! Bang! It's good! Doncic wins the game at the buzzer! Luca Doncic is the real deal. To make every pass, to feel like you could make every shot, to do so without being fleet of foot, to do so with kind of a cockiness, arrogance, but confidence that is infallible, to raise your team to greater heights than previously discovered, that was Larry Bird. That's Luka Doncic. Two seconds left. In the bird, he fires. Got to get it in. Here's Luca. Gets it away. It's good. A Doncic dagger. But if you just kind of release yourself from the have to be exact comparisons of the world and you're just honest and real with yourself, you'll go, Luca's the closest thing we've had to Bird since Bird. And when we had Bird, the sport was at its absolute peak. I think that's there for the league. But I think one reason it's there is. That guy reminds a lot of people, myself included, of Larry freaking legend. Here's Doncic. Oh! Are you kidding me? It's like he's in his back guard. He's not from this planet. All right. All right. So I, I've heard the Larry Bird comparisons for years now with Luka Doncic. And I get where some of them are coming from. I understand. And... It may even be true that he is the closest thing we have seen to a Larry Bird kind of player since Bird. I'm going to pump the brakes because I understand and I can see some similarities. But I'm going to pump the brakes even with some of the things he said in this video I don't quite agree with. I think it might be stretching... A little bit. I was trying to write things down and still pay attention, but I failed at it. So I stopped writing things down for points I wanted to talk about after the video. Is it true that they he does remind you of Bird because they aren't as athletic as a lot of the other players on the court? Absolutely. They tend to be, while they are less athletic, might not have as much burst off off the first your, your first step right might not be as fast as some of the players in the fast break so you're wondering how they're going to beat their defenders how they're going to beat the defenses how they're going to beat the double teams well like larry bird he's extremely crafty he knows how to move his body uh pretty damn good footwork and even luca has a little bit more girth than larry bird now larry bird's 610 luca Doncic against 610 but larry bird is heavier so he can move people around kind of like paul pierce used to do back in back in paul pierce's days 
to make up for the the height that he doesn't have that Larry Bird has. But similarly, they they know how to they're crafty at getting around their opponents, given their body type. I can see the similarities with the passes. I do think Larry Bird is a better passer than Luka Doncic, but Luka Doncic is a damn good passer. And you can see some of the similarities in some of the passes that they've thrown. Luka's an exceptional passer. Larry Bird is a super exceptional passer. But the one thing I, I, I do want to bring up when it comes to the passing and the numbers and things like that, with the, the big difference between Luka Doncic and Larry Bird, Larry Bird never monopolized the basketball. Larry Bird never dominated the basketball. Luka Doncic monopolizes the basketball. Luka Doncic dominates the basketball, like a Russell Westbrook, like a LeBron James, like a James Harden. The modern day stat sheet stuffers, because everything goes through them, they are making most of the passes that lead to the shot. And if they're not making the passes that lead to the shot, they're usually taking a shot. These type of players don't have a whole lot of hockey assists or not so much the distraction that leads to the pass that leads to the pass that leads to the shot. That would be a Luka, a LeBron, a James Harden, a Russell Westbrook kind of player. So they're going to have more opportunities to get these assists because they are looking they are looking to be the guy that finds the player that shoots. That was never Larry Bird. That was never... Larry Bird never dominated the basketball like that on a consistent basis anyway. These guys are like de facto point guards and the system runs around the point guard. That wasn't Larry Bird. Larry Bird was a point forward that had amazing point guard capabilities, but he wasn't dribbling around, holding the ball, waiting to find the, the pass so that he can get the assist, if not get the bucket. That was Larry Bird just played within the flow of the offense and didn't hold on to the ball. He didn't have glue on his hands, and he passed the ball around. And if he saw the right play, he'd make the right play. If he found the open player, he'd make the open player. Uh, he, he'd find the open player, but he, he didn't dominate the basketball like that. He did. I, I, I wasn't even around to watch Larry Bird, but through the film I've watched and the highlights that I've watched, in the few games that I've watched, I can tell you right now, that wasn't Larry Bird. He did not play like Luka and these other guys in that perspective. And the fact that Larry Bird was able to rack up the amount of assists he did without dominating the basketball the way he didn't dominate the basketball is, is absolutely, absolutely incredible. And it makes it a lot easier for your teammates to play with you when you don't monopolize the basketball like that because now when you go out they don't know what to do because they're used to you making all the goddamn plays and being the primary playmaker now what do they do when you're off the court what do they do when you're injured they're lost the boston celtics though not as good when larry bird was on the floor they they could still be functional when he wasn't on the floor because they knew how to move the basketball even without larry bird on the floor i think that's vital and very important for a team I remember one time Kobe Bryant said there was a game he played. Uh, I might have been against LeBron James. I don't know. I can't remember. But he didn't get the triple double. And after the game, one of Kobe's teammates were like, "Yeah, you know, you, you know, you scored your thirty points, but this other guy got the, got the triple double." And then Kobe just shook his head and laughed. He's like, "You don't understand, do you?" Kobe said, "I could go out there and get a triple double every game if I wanted to, but that's not the point." Me holding the ball and monopolizing the ball in that way takes away from the roles of my other teammates and taking away from things that they do well. And that's not beneficial to the team. So while Kobe may get his shots up, he's not taking over other people's duties and other aspects of the game. And then Kobe is like, you want me to get a triple? He said, you want me to get a triple double? Pick pick which team, something along those lines. I'm gonna pick a team, I'm gonna go get a triple double just to prove to you that I can get a triple double whenever I want. He went out there and got a triple double. It was like, I told you. I, I take that into consideration. I do, I do, I do, I do. And it's, it's a hard style of basketball to play in the playoffs and as you get deeper into the playoffs because teams can easily plan, scheme, and defend against players that monopolize the ball a lot. It's so much easier. So I, I did want to bring that up. Another thing I wanted to bring up was defense. Defense, defense, defense. Listen, I will not I will not say Luka Doncic is, even gets to the point where he's as good as Larry Bird because Larry Bird played defense, okay? Larry Bird played defense. 
He has a handful of all NBA defensive selections. And even the years where he he didn't make the all defensive teams, he was a par to above average defensive player. Just that there were a lot of great defensive players during Larry Bird's time. So it was it was stiff competition to make those all NBA defensive teams. But Larry was a was was a good defender and at times and for long durations of times a great defender at that. So we can't talk about that. Luca is an atrocious defender. He ain't even average. Luca is atrocious. He has horrible defensive prowess. He has horrible defensive fundamentals and he doesn't even look to play defense half the time. It's not even something it's not even something on his on his bucket list to do. So we can't even talk about that. <laughs> because defense, see, defense is part of your overall player. People like to separate, oh, I think he's a better player, but I think he's a better two-way player. No, defense is part of the game. Defense is, makes part of the player who you are. If you play defense and, and this guy doesn't, I'm not putting you in a different category. That contributes to him being a better basketball player than you. I'm not going to say, but he's a two-way player. No, he's a better player than you. Defense is part of the game, man. I'm not into separating it because, oh, you're a two-way player and he's better. No, no, no. Defense is part of it. I can understand the similarities and the the, the, the shit-talking, the smack-talking on the court. I can see the similarities there with Larry and Luca. That's one thing Luca has always said. I've heard say, he's like, it's, it's easy to talk. When you're up, Luca will talk smack to you, laugh in your face, do all that stuff, no matter no matter time, no matter score. But Dinwiddie brought it up. He's like, oh, you know, he he's, he said it. Dinwiddie was his teammate. He's, he's like, yo, yo, Dinwiddie, watch this. I'm going to do this to this guy. I'm going to do this to this guy. Watch me do it. And he pulled it off. Yeah, that's dope. But here's the difference. Larry Bird didn't say it to his teammates. Larry Bird went to the person he that was defending him and told the person defending him and the team, this is what he was going to do. This is where I'm going to be on the floor. So he was telling the, the opposition what he was going to do. That's way different than telling your teammate than the guy that's defending you, not sure what you're going to do. Larry Bird gave these guys, gave the defenders the blueprint to help them try to guard him. Luka didn't do that. There's a big difference there, folks. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. I see, I know some people already have Luka Doncic in their top 10 players of all time. I'm like, whoa. Are you on crack? Are you on... Ain't no way in hell Luka Doncic is a top 20 player of all time. Does Luka Doncic have the ability? He has a long career ahead of him. He's early in his career. Could he, could he find himself amongst the pantheon of all-time greats? Absolutely. But he has a lot of work to do. He has to get better defensively. He has to become a better defensive player. And he's going to have to win championships on top of that. You, he is, he will, I will never, ever. Can I say there are some similarities between him and Bird when I watch them play? Yes, there are some similarities. But there's not as much as people think. Not enough for me to be like, this is Larry Bird reincarnated. I'm not there yet, buddy. You got to show me more. You've got to show me love. You got to show me more. Hell, Luka Doncic is on the verge of not making the playoffs right now as we speak. We'll see what happens. But listen, I'm not there, man. I'm not. Like I, I just broke down how I feel they are similar and how I think some people are stretching a little bit and trying to make comparisons that aren't quite the same. They may seem the same on a surface level, but when you actually break it down, not quite the same. I'm not there yet. Pump the brakes. Pump the, it's going to be years before I even might consider it because Luca got a lot of work to do. But yeah, there are some small similarities that I see there. There are. There are. Stylistically at times. Yeah, sure. Sure. But when you start breaking it down, oh, and then they said in the video that he was a comparable shooter or could shoot like Larry Bird, something along those lines. I don't remember what he said verbatim. Wow, stop it. I can't go there with you. I can't go there with you. I can't go there with you. Uh, like I said, I don't care about the numbers. The error was different, but we all know Larry Bird was a sharp shooter, one of the greatest shooters to ever play this game from long range, from mid range, you name it. Okay. <laughs> Luca can't shoot like Larry Bird. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Ain't going there, bro. 
Larry with the bad back, the bad finger, messed up hands was still lights out, bro. I, I can't go there, man. I, I ain't going there. Luca can get hot. Luca can get, get Luca can definitely get hot. But Luca ain't no threat. Ain't no serious threat threat like Larry Bird with shooting a jumper. No sir. No sir. That's all I gotta say about it. Have you guys seen this video before? Where how do you compare Luka Doncic to Larry Bird? Do do you see the similarities? Do you agree with me? In my opinion, and how I broke down with the video provided for. So, do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, do you think Luka Doncic is already a top 10 player? Do you think he's a top 20 player, top 30? Where do you have Luka right now on your all time list? And do you think he is Bird reincarnated? Do you think he will ever be able to become as good, great as a player as Larry Bird? Even be able to sn get close enough to Larry to sniff his body odor? Will, 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 will Luka ever get that close? What do you think? I want to hear your opinion. You just heard mine. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and you know what? Catch you on the next one. We out, baby.